Close your eyes. Picture the faces of history. Go back through our years of learning and think back on all of the amazing people that we learned about from our history textbooks. How many of them are men? And how many of them are women? There's a good chance that from what you can remember, most of them are men. There are so many historical moments that founded the country as we know it today, and sadly, many of the female faces that should be remembered are not. Sadly, many of the women in history have been passed over in the writing of our textbooks to favor men instead. One of those women is Sybil Ludington. In America, give or take, there are about 150 million men and about 160 million women. While the ratio, for the most part, is one to one, we do outnumber them. But our history books still favor the men. In my research of Sybil Ludington, my understanding of the kind of woman that she really was, and just how important her accomplishments were to American history, grew substantially. I've come to realize just how much female figures have added to history, and how we have grossly overlooked their contributions. Today, I'll be outlining the life of Sybil Ludington, her contributions to American history, and how her accomplishments were just as important as Paul Revere's. Sybil Ludington was born April 5, 1761, and played a vital role in the American Revolutionary War, and it's only right to remember her for the legacy that she left behind. Born in Ludingtonville, New York, Sybil was the daughter of Henry Ludington, an officer of the New York Militia, who later became aide to General George Washington. On April 26, 1777, Sybil was 16 when a messenger arrived at the Ludington House to announce that Governor William Tyron had attacked the New York Militia's stores of ammunition in Danbury, Connecticut, 15 miles away. Colonel Ludington began to immediately organize the local militia members. It is unclear whether Sybil volunteered or was ordered to by her father, but in any case, she carried the order for militia members to rally together to defend against the British across the countryside. In an article written in 1907 by Ludington's great-nephew, Lewis S. Patrick, the recount is that her father bade her take a horse, ride for the men, and tell them to be at his, out, at his house by daybreak. It makes no difference if she was ordered or if she simply volunteered. History will always remember her as a 16-year-old girl that rode her horse nearly 40 miles through the night across unfamiliar roads to spread the word, warning those that could not fight and informing those who could where they needed to be before first light. She married in 1784 and died in 1839. Sybil Ludington is not the first or the only woman omitted from our history books. When it comes to history, the story of women is largely one of exclusion, silence, absence, and bias. Women have made a lot of history, but sometimes looking at the books, you wouldn't exactly know it. Years from now, women of any age can look back and see the steps that we have taken to clean the dust from the names of our female ancestors, and will remember not only them, but us as well, as we take steps to, pl take, steps to take our place in history right alongside the men. When we acknowledge women and their contributions to history, we shatter the myths that have been in place for centuries about women, what women can do and what women cannot do, and in doing so, we pave the way with our, their accomplishments and our own for future generations to learn from. Women have put up with a lot over the years. When trains became the newest way to travel, critics of the new technology protested that women's bodies were not designed to go at 50 miles an hour, and that female passengers' uteruses would fly out of their bodies as they were accelerated to that speed. Really? Even Aristotle was guilty of extreme sexism. He believed that women were simply defective men and that the female is a female by virtue of a certain lack of qualities, and that we should regard the female nature as afflicted with a natural defectiveness. Good to know. Women have dealt with a lot through the centuries, but one thing that should not still stand is our absence from history. We've been here just as long as the men have, and yet they're the ones that still receive more of the recognition, more of the benefits, and we're left behind, fighting for our chance in the light. 
Women have always been at the back of the line for recognition and are seriously undervalued in our history. Sybil Ludington challenges the accomplishments of Paul Revere, who rode little over 15 miles with her own ride through the countryside, and many Americans don't even know her name. Sybil Ludington was honored with a postal stamp in 1975. There's also a statue of her by Lake Glenida in Carnival, New York, as well as historical mar markers tracing the route that she took through the countryside to rouse her father's men for battle. While Sybil Ludington may not have been present for the Gettysburg Address or the signing of the Declaration of Independence, history will always remember her. Remember her as the 16-year-old girl that rode her horse nearly 40 miles through the night across unfamiliar roads to spread the word, warning those who could not fight, and informing those who could where they needed to be before sunrise.